Now, as Carly Simon might say, nobody does it better. Uh, no, I'm not talking about a James Bond movie uh, from 1977. I'm talking about this awesome series, The Pan Book of Horror Stories. Nobody does it better than Pan when it comes to great, unforgettable horror stories. Hi guys, welcome to another video. Hope you're all keeping well. Uh, now, in, in this video, I'd just like to depart from uh, reviewing horror movies uh, for the time being and talk about uh, books. Uh, and uh, when I say books, I am referring to the fact that I've just started collecting uh, all the uh, old vol volumes of the uh, Pan uh, Book of Horror Stories, which I've always loved in that. And it, they were such a staple, such a big staple of my teenage reading years. Yeah, absolutely love these books. Uh, and as I say, I've started to collect them and that, you know, yeah, because um, I think these are the, the best books of uh, horror stories ever written, ever compiled and that, yeah, yeah. So uh, at the moment, I've managed to get a couple from me uh, online and that, you know, I'm hoping to collect all 30 volumes. But at the moment, I've got, these are the ones I've got at the moment anyway. So I've got the 8th Pan Book of Horror Stories, the ninth Pan Book of Horror Stories, the 12th Pan Book of Horror Stories. Absolutely love these covers, guys. The famous werewolf cover. The 13th Pan Book of Horror Stories, the reprints a few years ago of the very first uh, Pan Book of Horror Stories, and finally I've got this one here, Back from the Dead, The Legacy of the Pan Book of Horror Stories, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, before I go any further, I just give you like, like to give you a little bit of background. Uh, you know, on the um, on the on on the pan on the pan book of horror stories, the history generally, yeah, yeah, right, okay. Um, so um, the series the series ran uh, from uh, nineteen fifty nine to uh, tonight, you know, to nineteen eighty nine. Now uh, there were thirty volumes uh, in total, um, and uh, these these books were especially noted for their you know lurid covers. Uh, is a good example, guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, now the series was the series was initially compiled and edited by the late Grace Her Herbert Van Thal, but after he died, the series was taken over um, by Clarence Pad Clarence Padgett, uh, from volume from volume from volume twenty six until uh, you know its demise in nineteen eighty nine uh, with volume thirty. Now, um, each volume uh, uh, featured a wide range of horror. Horror stories from both famous authors and uh, you know not not so famous. Yeah, uh, many many of the stories were you know, they were quite ahead of the time. You know, in terms of in terms of regaling the horror fan, uh, with quite explicit scenes of death, death, gore, and bloody dismemberment. And some classic stories in here too, guys. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, even without the blood and gore. There was always a treat for me as a, as a teenager. You know, in 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 the nineteen seventies and that. You know. Uh, to go into my local library or my local bookstore and see a new a new uh, volume, you know, available on the bookshelves and that. Yeah, always excited, always got them, always either borrowed them or bought them if I had the money and that. You know, yeah. And some of the stories were that good. I read them over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, these I think these are the finest volumes, guys, of horror stories ever written. Yeah, the Pan Book of Horror. Yeah. So um, now um, in in the run up in the run up to Halloween in October two thousand and eighteen. BBC Radio, Radio 4, broadcast Anne Sullivan's, re, you know, reinterpretation of five stories from, from the, um, the 1962, the 1962 second pan book, pan book of horror stories, which was, this was part of the station's 15 minute drama series. Now, uh, the pan book of horror stories set a benchmark for all, you know, for all similar horror collections to reach. Now, um, since since the pan book since the pan book since the pan book's demise in 1989 uh, there have of course been many there have been many similar collections of horror tales horror tales published um by the published the world over but as far as far as far as i'm concerned the uh, you know very very few of them have come up to the the sheer brilliance and uh, enjoyability factor of the original you know the original pan books of horror yeah 
Um, and when we actually revisit the pan books of horror, it's like revisiting an old friend and that, yeah, yeah. In my opinion, the pan books are like fine wine. They get better and better with age, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm very pleased to start collecting them and that, you know, yeah. Uh, you know, because it sort of like rekindles the memories of when I used to rent them from your local library in the 70s and that. And we used to buy them and that, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so fantastic volumes, the pan book of horror, yeah. Um, now, although the series has long been gone, the pan, you know, the pan book of horror stories, they continue to, they still, they still continue to enjoy a cool following, you know, to this day with many, many websites sprouting up here and there and that, you know, paying tribute to them and that, yeah, yeah. So there you go, that's a little bit of background on the pan book of horror, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'd just like to show you, talk about each one of these guys as well. Um, so the early, as I say, I've just showed you that one, the earliest one, the re actual reprint by, uh, by, uh, well, it was they were selected by Herbert Van Dahl, but these were reprinted in um yeah in in two thousand and ten yeah got some great stories in here guys yeah yeah Joan Aiken the Jugged Hair Al Barker submerged Oscar Puckers Beautiful Hands the Horror in the Museum that's a good one by Hazel Heald yeah no yeah, these, as I say, guys, these books, they provided a great platform for new authors as well to try and get their, you know, the short horror fiction published and that, gain exposure and that, you know, yeah. And uh, as I say, there was both famous authors in these and, and not so famous, like uh, Stephen King, you know, Ramsey Campbell, or Chetwin Hayes and that, the famous, you know, big names in horror, alongside with lesser known, lesser known authors and that, yeah. Some very fine stories they were, they were as well, guys, and that, you know, yeah. So, um, so... Uh, in regards to how my collection's going at the moment, uh, apart from that one, this is the earliest one. This is the eighth pan book of horror stories. Great cover there, and there's the back, guys, if you want to have a read of the back. That's the eighth pan book of horror. Now I've got the ninth pan book of horror. As you say, it's in a pr pretty well-worn state, but, you know, it's still readable in that, yeah. Yeah, some great stories here. The Jolly Uncle and the Dummy That Sucked Blood. The Unmarried Mother and the Torture Master. The film director who flayed his girl alive. The wife <laughs> the wife who turned into an insect. That should be a good one, yeah. Yeah. I forget a lot of these stories, guys. Yeah, you know, because it's years since I, I, I you know went through them and that, you know, uh, in, you know, as he came out, yeah. So that's the that's the ninth pan book of horror stories. Next one up is the twelfth pan book of horror stories. Very frosty looking skeleton, very frosty looking skull there, guys, yeah. Yeah, stories in here. The Hunter by David Case, very fine writer, David Case. Ashes to Ashes by Alan Hillary. The Terrapin, Terrapin by Patricia Highsmith. 14 Unholy Offerings to Waken Half Forgotten Fears. And Leave Sleep Cowering in the Halls of Terror. There you go, guys, there's the back. I say absolutely love these covers, that, that brilliance, yeah. I think these are the best covers ever done for a horror horror collection series, yeah. So there you go, that's the 12th pan book of horror stories. Most recent purchase, the 13th pan book of horror stories. This is where they started changing the uh, title to this sort of like uh, smaller writing. Now I must admit, I did prefer... I did prefer the earlier volumes with the, where they had the the title really really stood out in that, yeah, yeah. But uh, the, again, the stories are very good, like, you know, in these and that, yeah. The unspeakable evil that lies dormant in the mind of man can erupt in diabolical ways. Dear God, it was a skull, eyeless, teeth drawn back in a hideous rictus, and so piously clasped hand claws rather held something, yeah. Some great stories, and I love that werewolf cover, yeah. So there you go, that's the 13th Pan Book of Horror Stories. And of course, Back From the Dead, The Legacy of the Pan Book of Horror Stories. Every time I look at this this book, guys, I, you know, it it, 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 it it makes me want what it makes me want the um want them all these books reprinted in, you know, in a in a, well in, in their original covers, but in a lovely fresh packaging, you know, fresh sort of like print run and that, you know, yeah. So if there's any publishers watching this, uh, you know, there's an idea for you. Go back to the pan book of horror stories and bring them all out you know one by one uh, you know in the with the original covers but with you know with a slight modern slant to them and that yeah because i think they'd sell you know yeah i think you know there's a lot of horror fans out there like that you know we love we love to see that these these books re reissued and that yeah yeah so there you go that is back from the dead the legacy of the pan book of horror stories there's all the uh, contrib contributing authors guys there
Yeah. Yeah. So fingers crossed. You never know. They might bring them. They might bring the mouse again. Yeah. So. As I say, it's very, I'm, I'm really excited to start having, you know, start rebuilding these and that, you know. So, as I say, I hope I hope to eventually get them all on that because I absolutely love the Pan Book of Horror, you know. Um, best uh, volumes ever, ever, um, what's the name, released in my opinion, yeah. Uh, and I also used to like the Fontana Book of Horror Stories as well, which sort of like they were, I, 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 I thought they were the main rival to the Pan Book of Horror Stories. Uh, uh, if my memory serves me correctly, they were edited by... Uh, Mary Danby. Well, I think most of them were edited by by Mary Danby. Yeah, yeah. If you've got any knowledge about these and that, you know, if, if you want to sort of like your comments and that, yeah, leave your comments down below. Yeah, yeah. But getting back to these guys, yeah, absolutely love collecting these. The Pan Book of Horror. Yeah, they were so sort of like influential. You know, they influenced a lot of a lot of um, writers to take up horror fiction and that. Yeah, and uh, there's some cracking stories in them. There really is and that. You know. Uh, I think a couple, Robert Block have a couple in as well and that, yeah, very fine writer. I've got his short stories as well, yeah. But there has been, uh, in recent uh, recent years, there's been a there's been a new series of horror stories uh, released called Corona, Corona Book of uh, Horror Stories and that, yeah. And then you've got another one, uh, well, you had one a couple of years ago called the, uh, the Black Book of Horror, but they sort of like, after a few volumes, they went off the markets and that. I've got one or two of them in my collection, yeah, the Black Book of Horror, so, um, but yeah, but getting back to the Pan Book of Horror Stories, yeah, um, yeah, these, they, they, these were such a staple, such a staple of my reading, you know, in the teenage years and that, yeah, and I still love them to this day, you know, and uh, I would recommend anybody, you know, if you love horror fiction and that, if you ever see these in a charity shop, yeah, very, very rare now, guys, yeah, you see these in a charity shop. Because they've long been out of out of prints, yeah. So at the moment, I've been all I've been all I've been able to do is just order them online, and I've seen them at, at pretty decent prices, yeah. There's one or two volumes like it; they're very hard to get off. I believe they go for hundreds of pounds, you know. Um, I'm not sure if it's the very last volume, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah. So there you go. That's me. That's me. Video on the uh, the Pan Book of Horror Stories, yeah, yeah. Uh, are you a fan of these books? Uh, leave your comments down below. Watch it. Have you got any particular favourite stories and that? Yeah, love to hear from you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, always reply to me. Uh, you know, me followers and that. All parts of YouTube, etiquette yeah, guys, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Reciprocate the goodwill and friendship and that and support. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So as I say, that, that winds me me video up on the Pan Book of Horrors. I thought I'd just show you them, uh, and uh, as I, as I get more and more. Uh, you know, I'll probably do one or two more videos in the future, updating you on, on how, I, how I am with me collecting these volumes and that, yeah. I get a great, 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 great kick out of, out of perusing the internet, you know, finding volumes on eBay and that, you know, and sending off for them. I've got I've got one to come. Um, I think, I'm not sure if it's the, uh, it's I think it's one of the, uh, the later volumes, yeah, yeah, but I'm waiting for that one to come. And, uh, yeah, always support the Pan Book of Horror Stories, yeah. Uh, I'd love to hear from any fans who love, love these books as well, yeah. So uh, there you go. So that's that's my collection today. So the Pan Book of Horror Stories, yeah, fantastic covers, guys. All stories were great as well. Yeah, can't beat these books. Yeah, L absolutely love them. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, that's it. Uh, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all again soon. Cheers.